Good afternoon. I'm Mirshnichenka Vasil, uh, the co-founder of UCMC and strategic communication partners, company CFC Big Ideas. I'm glad to welcome you all. Today we have final discussion about cultural diplomacy. This is the second discussion organized by the uh, Ukrainian Institute together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We had discussion last week and we presented the five-year strategy of the Ukrainian Institute and today we are going to discuss the topic that is called cultural diplomacy in the context of regional priorities of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine. We're going to speak about geography, about those uh, targets that the state has uh, and uh, how Ukrainian Institute uh, and the Ministry will work together and uh, will reach those goals that were set by the state. We have an interesting panel. We have interesting speaker, speakers. I would like to visit them. Eminent Japarova, first Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Sergei Kulsonsky, Director of Diplomacy Academy, named after Gennady Udovinka, and uh, also newly elected uh, Ambassador to Japan. We hope that uh, he will start soon in Tokyo and also Today we have Andrei Kurkov, Ukrainian uh, writer, journalist, desk writer, the president of PAN Ukraine. Uh, Katerina Smagli, head of the Department of International Cooperation and Communication at Diplomacy Academy, Diplomatic Academy, and also a member of the uh, program, leader of the Next Generation uh, McCain Institute US, and she studied topics connected with public diplomacy, cultural diplomacy, and today she is going to share with us her experience. Today also we have Gennady Maksak, executive director of uh, Ukrainian PRISM and the head of uh, public council at the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and Gennady Shimko, director of the Ukrainian Institute. So, uh, um, we have supportive UCMC, and uh, we are grateful to Ukraine Crisis Media Center for this. And also, uh, we'd like to remind you that uh, next two weeks, on the uh, 30th of July, we'll have next discussion. We're going to discuss the strategy of um, actors, of those who um, carry out activities, uh, diplomatic activities. And um, you may watch broadcast uh, through bro um, the page of the Ukrainian Institute, and also you may watch Ukraine uh, Crisis Media Center YouTube page. We have simultaneous translation. That's why I ask uh, um, to speak slowly in order that our interpreters be able to interpret you properly. So, uh, about cultural diplomacy. Cultural diplomacy in the context of improvement of Ukraine in the of the image of Ukraine in the world. Uh, there are some factors that seriously influence the perception of the state and the world. Uh, so, high level of corruption, lack of independence of courts, uh, one unfavorable business climate. In order to change those things. We should implement state policy that would be efficient and would allow us to reach results. When we are speaking about cultural diplomacy, we have culture. It is diverse. It is interesting aspect. This is reflected in the uh, Ukrainian Institute strategy um, and uh, um, the Netherlands, the, Austri uh, uh, the Netherlands, Austria, and other countries. They are really important. The audience there is. Uh, really um, wants to have high quality products, so uh, we should understand what may be this uh, content and the key challenge is a resource because cultural diplomacy needs funding, energy, human capital, and I'm really glad that we have today such institutions as the Ukrainian Institute that are able to correctly manage the process and to have better results and effect. And also internal processes forming uh, the uh, brand of the state and uh, during the recent years Ukraine is now not terra incognita and for many countries of the world uh, and uh, 
we have internal uh, and uh, foreign processes. We speak with your Atlantic countries. We show um, and they are interested what you, Ukraine is today. And uh, in 2014, we started these reforms uh, and 20, uh, 20 most important reforms in different areas. And for me, this should be reflected in the cultural content that, and uh, through the language of culture, we may show Ukraine and how it overcome all those challenges. And uh, at my previous position at the Ministry of Information Policy, we worked with uh, Ukraine as a brand and uh, it should help to have more effect concerning perception of the step of uh, the country, visibility of the uh, country in the world should be increased. And about regional priorities, uh, it is clearly stated by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we have three regions, Asian region, and I hope that Mr. Sergei Kursunsky would, will increase this area because Japan is one of the main priorities for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, then uh, Middle East, uh, and uh, there was lack of attention to this region, and now for Ukraine this region is important, uh, connected with the conflict with the Russian Federation. Russian Federation um, actively works in this region of the Middle East and uh, uh, Northern Africa, and we should reinforce our efforts there. I had an opportunity to travel to these regions, and uh, I would like to say that uh, they do not know a lot about Ukraine, and uh, I believe that we should take into account Islamic fact, uh, Ukrainian Tatars, uh, tata, so, uh, the fact uh, that are indigenous uh, peoples uh, in Ukraine, and um, also I believe that we should open those doors, uh, the, uh, we may open the hearts of uh, uh, Muslims to Ukraine, and also Euro-Atlantic direction. We have normal situation here. I would like to state that um, this is the interest to Ukraine in the context of reforms that are ongoing and the priority that we fixed in the Constitution of Ukraine. This is uh, um, it's NATO and EU, and uh, uh, this is the transformation of our conscience. We are European state, and uh, we should um, communicate that this is really important uh, for us through um, our culture, through proper messages concerning the issues. Well, I suggest that everybody has a chance to have an introductory remarks, and then we are going to address the first questions to Emine, since she has to leave, to leave us soon, and please mind that if you would like to ask uh, to put your questions to the uh, MFA, try to do that first of all. Now I give the floor to Sergei Korsunsky, uh, who actually is the head or director of the, the Diplomatic Academy, and we hope that uh, soon he is going to reach Tokyo, and we hope that um, the Olympic Games uh, will be staged there anyway, because we heard a lot that they are, were going to cancel that, but anyway, this is a very good way to promote the knowledge about Ukraine. So please, Sergei, the floor is yours in the context of our discussion, and we know that the priority of Asia, when I hear the word Asia, it scares me, because Asia is a huge continent is very difficult to separate something uh, some different regions like the far east ocean region etc etc so when i hear the word asia it kind of intimidates me but this is kind of a huge something which you cannot grasp immediately so your reflections on this specific subject matter thank you very much for the opportunity given to me uh, welcome to everybody. I would like to uh, welcome everybody. Well, a few words not only pertain to my future work, but my previous work as well. First of all, I'm happy that we have an Ukrainian institute at last. And uh, from, uh, from the very beginning, it was just an idea to be discussed. We met quite often and we just tried to try to understand what we could do together. We were dealing with the public diplomacy. In our, our employees of this institute, they participate in training diplomats, uh, educating diplom diplomats, and 
Nobody uh, those who are in the orbit of the MFA have no, any doubt about the importance of that. I, you know, um, I'm a bit scared when I, rem I remember one thing. We have about 15 years when our embassy um, has been established in Turkey, but we haven't had any Ukrainian day or week or 10-day uh, period uh, in that country, but maybe we lack the necessary resources if it were not for a very good will and our close relationship and cooperation with the Turkish government, maybe this would not be the case even now. Turkey, why I'm talk talking about Turkey? Because uh, we have a centuries-old relationship, not only now where I'm talking not only about neighboring relations, but um, culture, and the Cossack era, etc., etc., and actually, that means that realistically, there, was not, there is no real policy, well, there has not been a, a real policy. Thanks God, we have it now, nowadays. Uh, speaking about the, um, the past priority, this is not my business, let's say, but I'm really happy that the, it's kind of coincidence. And I hope that next fall I'm going to reach Japan and I'm going to work there. And we already discussed this specific issue that it's not only... Uh, political or economic um, priority for the Ukraine, but also this is one of the priorities for Ukrainian Institute. We are not very well established or not, not enough present there. What we have done so far, it was kind of amateur approach and we would like to have more systematic and more dedicated efforts to be um, thrown in just to demonstrate that Ukraine is much bigger, much more profound in interest culture, which is uh, is rather well integrated international pro process. I, I read a lot about Japan. It's my pleasure to say that this country is very, very much, um, uh, it has a lot of opportunities for cultural, let's say, inputs, if you will. And uh, you remember some very famous cartoons, specifically animated, uh, art of uh, Japan, Japanese, there are some Ukrainians with Bandura, there are some Jap Japanese citizens who live here and play Bandura, there is Ukrainian citizens, a girl who lives in Japan and sings there, and she's very much interested in uh, whatever uh, is associated with her profession. And actually, the Japanese citizens really um, well, you was somebody else actually take interest in their culture and their country when they respect it, etc. In that country, they actually they put on the screen the modern Ukrainian uh, movies and documentaries, and, and you know those are just fragments, episodes. And in Shalai's, we are says, and may, if we have really the Olympic Games, uh, this. Uh, this is a very good opportunity for really large-scale activities, or let's say campaign, but just have to find the proper uh, time, proper, let's say, um, format in order to um, to draw attention of, uh, to attract attention, if you will, or to draw attention from uh, of Japanese to the Ukraine, taking into consideration that the world is uh, uh, undergoing uh, a lot of changes that the culture and the outlooks also uh, subjected to changes. And I do agree with our moderator when we hear the word Asia. Asia is a very different uh, notion. And uh, we were talking about Japan. This is the biggest, the largest democracy in, um, in, the, in Asia. It's the third largest economy in the world, and we have to um, take uh, the chance, and, um, uh, and I take the chances to you. I, I know that Andrei Kurkov um, traveled a lot um, uh, over Japan, and this is very, very well known person. I, I, I don't know whether his his books have been already translated into Japanese or not. If not, but we have to do everything you know to make it happen. Oh, you have already. We actually published a lot of um, let's say uh, works and uh, books of the Japanese uh, writers and uh, Japanese people also uh, read a lot. This is a part of their own culture, you know. And nat naturally, 
Um, our opportunities, our possibilities are limited by our dreams so far. We, um, uh, I hope that we are going to overcome the existing, uh, existing, let's say, limitations or restrictions which we are living through uh, in this world of ours. Yeah, I know that the, uh, the, the, in Japan, the local citizens suffer a lot from the COVID-19 pandemic, but we hope that this will go away anyway one day. And the, uh, I really um, look forward next year, uh, the representatives of the Ukrainian Institute uh, visiting uh, Japan, and uh, I will try to find uh, partners in Japan starting from the very first days of my presence in that country in order to make or to make happen, let's say, um, implementation of very serious projects in that country. Thank you very much for your invitation. It's sent to me and I'll be prepared to take questions if any. Thank you very much. I hope that you're going to invite not only representatives of the Ukrainian Institute but all the participants in our discussion because we also wish very much to be there. Now I'd like to turn the mic to um, Andrei Kurko. Maybe he's the only representative of Ukrainian culture at our today's discussion. Of course, we do not have to uh, to, uh, to say a lot about this person to you. Andrei, let's see, can you share your um, ideas, your thoughts regarding our topic we are going to discuss today? Actually, you, you, you wrote a very nice uh, books in many countries, actually, and publish your books in their own in their own languages. Uh, our country did not help you to do that. No, I was both not. Uh, well, in your opinion, may, maybe somebody else would like to have such a support uh, from the government of the state of Ukraine. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank uh, MFA of Ukraine because over the last 15 years, uh, their activities have changed drastically for the better. I remember in the 1990s when a Ukrainian writer went to Germany, Ukrainian diplomats were afraid that he was going to say something wrong. And once one of our diplomats actually shut the door loudly, you know, when I mentioned a few words about Kuchma and he just left the audience. Starting from the um, 2000s, um, we had the diplomats who started to invite Ukrainian writers on behalf of the embassies, relevant embassies, to come to that another country and to tell about this or another book which was going to be translated in the relevant language. So we have to address an intelligent, intellectual um, you know, citizens of this or another country, those who allow or take interest in, um, in music, in uh, cinema, and who understand that the culture works for them, and so that Ukraine can reach them there. And, and those efforts actually formed the impression about Ukraine. First of all, there is a political interest towards this or another country, and then it entails a cultural interest, because you cannot comprehend or understand this or another country without its culture, the nation, the citizens, etc. For example, if anything happens in, the, in one of the countries, for example, in Albania, if something happens, and somebody will go to the bookstore and ask the local, let's say, sellers, do you have anything about Albania or some books or whatever? And, and Ismail Kenner, one of the uh, uh, writers who knows Albanian language, he actually, he talked a lot about Albania. He, uh, he uh, lived in Albania for 20 years, and he came back to Albania, he was in France, but he actually shouldered the burden of giving the information about Albania. They were not lucky. They had only one such writer, but there were, um, there were some uh, countries where several writers in, uh, tried to <clears throat> give the information about their respective countries to a big number of people. For Ukraine, this kind of interpretation, or let's say, conveying the information. In each country, this information works differently. For example, in Poland, when the Ukrainian culture is well known and all the intelligent and, let's say, uh, the, uh, the Polish, they, um, they, they, they read a lot of information, the newspapers, then they started to read the books, then the, the, the older writers, then they switch over to more modern writers. But now, for, but we have to work in Poland in a different way as compared, for example, with Germany where there is a big competition with the Russian culture, which actually, um, let's say, took 
to the, that country, whatever we had in the Soviet times. For example, if we visit Lithuania or what, uh, any Baltic states, they will take special pleasure to communicate with us because they give us a preference because of some historical issues. But in other countries, there is no preference. If you are talking about our Ukraine, for example, in Italy, the leftist parties are very strong and powerful, like in Greece as well. And they and they uh, hear the news or get the news about Ukraine via Moscow. And then we have to uh, uh, to exert more efforts, you know, cultural efforts, including, including including the efforts of diplomats or cultural diplomats. I would not divide um, or separate Europe from Asia. Europe is not a monolithic um, entity and not, not monochrome. And perhaps it would be more difficult for us to, um, to, to make our voice well heard in the, that part of the world than, for example, in Czech Republic or in uh, well, Poland. History has two interests if we are talking about can, our country, historical and ecological. And we can actually use both of those in order to convey to them the following message. I mean, the, our, our cultural message and make them interested in our country. For example, I visited first time in Japan in 2015 when uh, when when uh, in Japan they uh, they published in the Japanese language uh, my history of Maidan they invited me but that was not a presentation of my book that uh, those were rather public discussions and the lectures I delivered uh, uh, there in about Ukraine usually I present the culture you know there other the and this interest it was always associated uh, with the Chernobyl accident. And actually, and this interest grew even stronger after the Fushima uh, accident. There was a very interesting little book of Mar by Martin Kamish, which is called uh, Zone, The Zone. And this, uh, this book tells about illegal tourism uh, to kind of stalkers, you know, into the Chernobyl uh, area and then actually this uh, book made a kind of real um, uh, uh, it called kind of wave of interest first in either but in France etc and of course such a book should be um, promoted uh, and, and uh, it has to reach the the land of Japan and any action any cultural action which can be I realized in a in a country, we can actually we have to plan a kind of part, a link of the chain, so that chain becomes longer and longer, and this is a, a unique opportunity to do that today because many of our writers uh, have a command of foreign languages. They know how to publicly speak in public, and over the last fifteen years, I can talk about some specific grant that in America, Canada, in the Western. Europe and even in India, they often invite for public discussions not politicians, not even journalists, but rather uh, journalists, uh, writers and the representatives of the uh, scientific circles. I mentioned India. This is the country where we have to make our presence. This is very important to be present there because in that country, like in China, there is a big love still for the Soviet Union. Many local populations still believe that they so it you know, still exists, it hasn't died, you know. So we have to bring our new culture to that part of the world that uh, the Soviet Union actually demised, you know. There is no longer any Soviet Union, that each new country has its cultural face, its own cultural face. Thank you, Andre. We are going to put some questions to you. Now I would like to give the floor to Ekaterina Smagli. You know, Ekaterina, you have already interesting topic. On the one hand, you would like to talk about America, and on the, the, the other hand, we have our interest in America, and we have to introduce our culture and our presence there. We have to really to introduce our cultural diplomacy in that country. And there is an interesting story. This is the United States. You are talking about it. Like uh, any other developed countries, they do not have to exert so many efforts because they have Hollywood. They have the uh, sort of business, uh, whatever works by itself without any support on the part of the, uh, the respective government, but the whole world actually 
uh, follows that and uh, consume the cultural uh, products and uh, through those products they actually perceive or develop their perception of the United States. We know it, for example, after the collapse of the regime of Saddam Hussein, there were a lot of anti-American, anti-USA sentiments in the uh, Middle East countries, uh, and a lot of efforts were exerted in 2004, et cetera, et cetera. Many people actually burned the um, U.S. flags, et cetera, et cetera. But your children, you know, they, they studied Harvard University, you know, you know so we, you can maybe share your experience. Well, U.S. really is a unique case, very interesting case, and while you were talking, um, you know, maybe the most successful example of American Diplomacy came to my mind, Gondolisa um, uh, 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 Rice, I'm talking about, uh, who during the outbreak, um, uh, well, let's say the, the blossoming of the entire American sentiment, she actually um, made a lot of public speeches, and she, she is actually a brilliant pianist, and she played piano many times, and even she um, gave some concert dedicated to, to the uh, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, in Great Britain, uh, and repeated more than once, she uh, was on the stage in the United States. Even in her apartment, uh, she gave some concerts to the, uh, let's say, diplomatic corps, or those diplomats who worked in those days in the United States. So I'm going to start with some of the thesis. I would like to start with the words of gratitude to the Ukrainian Institute, which actually starts a very unique thing to all of us, like a new institution. And they actually give us an example of, of a model of an open discussion uh, of the different point of view. Actually, employees of the Ukrainian Institute have worked on that specific subject matter for many months, uh, where dedicated labor is required. And we are talking about those issues which actually fall under the jurisdiction of MFA of Ukraine. We should not forget that the Diplomatic Academy and the Council on Western Center MFA and all the organizations who work out their strategy, they work together, coordinate their efforts. And all of us, we have something to do to implementation of strategy of the cultural diplomacy. I believe that all this made all our efforts more systematic and efficient. So I just can call everyone of you to our partnership and coordination efforts, all the players who are presented here under the general umbrella of the Minister of Culture, of course. Um, it notifies my heart to understand that um, the ambitions of the Ukrainian Institute and the approach they used for that, you know, uh, to work out this strategy. This is really very uh, important. But this ambition, um, the, very, uh, the beginning of the road, can actually um, make a trick for you. And uh, actually, my question is, what is the uniqueness and uh, value of the Ukrainian institutes as per se? Because the priorities which you establish for yourselves can be used in the same way by some other new institutions, the Ukrainian Cultural Foundation and the uh, Art Arsenal and the Minister of Culture, to that matter. So I would like, to, uh, if you're talking about your strategies, so any reader, any expert who deals seriously with the issues of international policy and international re relations, they ask why actually there is some added value of the um, Ukrainian Institute in this. Very often they have kind of discussion, uh, what is more sharing, I mean, in this uh, cultural diplomacy, cultural diplomacy. So maybe I'm mistaken, but it seems to me that there is a lot of culture, but I would like to have more diplomacy in that. And uh, again, in my, to my mind, we could do that if you involve in the development of the strategy and its implementation, more experts who work on a daily basis in diplomatic sphere, former diplomats, former ministries of foreign affairs, <clears throat> advisors, counselors, etc. Even the incumbent, let's say, ambassador of Ukraine to the United States, who knows what kind of instruments of Ukrainian diplomacy could help him. He knows better than anybody else how to help Ukraine and the Ukraine Institute with its strat strategy. So next time, maybe, when we have a new wording of this strategy, to find more 
names, not only of Ukrainian experts who we do have to thank for their interest in this uh, work of this institute, but more uh, highly skilled professional Ukrainian diplomats. I was amazed that some of the priorities which have been mentioned by MFA did not find their reflection in your strategy. And I'm talking about cooperation with the Ukrainians living abroad or the businesses uh, dealing abroad with the, for the attraction of their investments, how you, culture can promote attraction of the uh, investments. And those issues are not reflected at all, to, I mean, in that. And the way I would like to ask how the Ukrainians is going to uh, to, to, to help MFA to reveal the uh, old stereotypes existence that we should not hush down that we still are the victims um, of the aggression. So our cultu cultural diplomacy have, first of all, to focus their attention on this specific issue. If the priorities are subject to changes, and we said that we have to promote our images now, the country uh, would like to implement the reforms, but now we are talking in this case about a different type of a diplomacy. I would like to read advice or recommend the Ukrainian Institute to partially depart from the programmatic um, um, uh, 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 structure which you have today. Understand that your divisions are subdivided into the, so to say, trends or directions of your activities, culture, cinematography, books, etc., etc. As, uh, as the first deputy minister of MFA um, mentioned, we need our uh, focus on specific regions. It's very important for you to understand the specifics of each separate uh, region. What are the interests of Ukraine in every relevant or well, respective uh, region? And you already have the uh, experience of implementing similar projects. What projects could be instrumental could be successful in this or another region. Um, I would like to say a few separate words about the um, Ukrainian Institute side. I believe that um, they are talking mostly about grants and the possibility of grant support. I would like to have more live stories on that side, and the interviews with the um, um, figures of art, artists, um, uh, the Ukrainian movies, maybe a short uh, documentaries or um, the videos about Ukrainian museums because the dry figures do not ensure this impression about Ukrainian culture or knowledge about that. The fact of time is very important for the Ukrainians. So they have been working for uh, to, 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 to come up with their stretch for a long time. And after several months of that such work, we are forced to immediately without any preparation to change that. So my, rec my, my advice is to less to work less on the strategy, but to do our homework and work more on uh, the mistakes we actually uh, uh, committed and uh, uh, made uh, uh, along that road. We need to to, to depart from uh, the situation when uh, we, 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 we should not, we should depart from the possibility to become kind of grant-based organization, and we have to come up with our own product, I mean. Now, coming back to the United States, Using opportunities, um, uh, opportunities, strengths, SWAT. Um, actual strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, uh, and threats. That's uh, what. Um, first of all, I would like to take taking this opportunity to thank one, uh, once again for the uh, Department of State for the Pompeo's uh, Crimean uh, uh, document. We would like to say that our biggest force is Ukrainian diaspora, which over the last 60 years. Um, established or set up a lot of different Ukrainian institutions on territory in the United States. And, uh, they are scattered. Not only New York is uh, culturally represented, but also Detroit, San Francisco, Chicago, and even Arizona, where I lived for last year. A lot has been done by the previous ambassador. Uh, I would mention his effort because after the Revolution of Dignity, even before the Ukrainian um, uh, Institute was established, we had the Department of Ukrainian Dip Cultural Diplomacy. There were a lot of projects, and the key ones of those opening the um, um, monument to the Ukrainian genocide, you know, uh, victims. And I believe that we still have to continue this topic as well. In the future, I would like to, uh, to, 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 to request that we should continue the, 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 the annual project of Ukrainian 
Unless death or the United States, our weaknesses, those were the strengths, our weaknesses, only two projects of the East, Ukraine Institute were actually targeted on the United States. So only one was targeted 1% on the Ukraine diaspora, on the cultural exchange. As was still mentioned uh, during uh, when he opened our discussion, that only elite uh, studies in the Ukrainian, uh, in the United States universities, and uh, not only in the elite is going to work. Uh, to, to work on the issues of uh, state with etc etc they, they, they were talking about the, the diplomats of other countries so you have this opportunity to share the information so i'd like to call upon you to disseminate this information as much as possible and diplomatic academy can also be a very reliable partner why not to have uh, next summer the first school of ukrainistics and uh, the summer um, uh, Curriculum for those wishing uh, in the Ukrainian Diplomatic Academy for, for, for our foreign colleagues. Challenge, our challenges is Russia and the, the, a lot of money which they actually uh, allocate for, you know, for in the cultural and actually Ukraine will not be able to win over Russia in this respect uh, for the length of time. I'm not going to mention a lot of names who who contributed to like 30 million dollars into you know, victory in the territory of the United States. Our projects must be mobile, it be uh, capable of light multiplicacy on the territory of other countries. What I'm talking about, the project 50 discoveries, um, you know, inventions, which was um, actually uh, became public in the United States. It, we can do the same in other countries, like in Japan, because it, it uses universal language. The projects of the USMC, we can use that in order to also. Our biggest opportunities, 30 universal uh, independent Ukraine next year, and Ukrainian uh, institute like the MFA must actually use this uh, outstanding date to once again remind to the whole world about the contribution of Ukraine into the preservation of peace and uh, <clears throat> our participation in the peacemaking efforts of the United Nations and, and uh, our reforms and the threats that everything may, re may remain without any changes. We again are going to say goodbye and, um, and actually um, Big hours, let's say, the, 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 and then be in our uh, in the, be our offices, and it will be soft and, and not smart diplomacy. And thank you very much. Uh, this is very critical, very good feedback um, you know, because this is really very important for the institute. Because indeed, uh, we are talking about the, um, the 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 kind of the roadmap, let's say, um, and this could be regarded as a uh, working document, and we really are tuned to do everything uh, we can in order to, uh, to, to, to crystallize whatever is, uh, is, uh, is ahead of us, you know. And then, by the way, the 50 inventions is a project which was initialized by um, UCMC. Yeah, I know that there are a lot of questions, but I'm, I would like to turn the mic to Gennady. We are talking about regions and the priorities. We mentioned uh, United States and Asia, and the Middle East has been mentioned already as well. But if you would like to continue this topic, because we have this kind of regionality topic, from the point of view of um, priorities of our foreign policy, thank you. Vasil, I'm going to start with my great tutors, the team of UCMC, because we, your huge work can be easily seen on this strategy, and we understand what you would like to reach and achieve. And of course, it's our pleasure to realize that um, the Ukrainian prism um, is, is one of the basis of this development. Of so, if um, I, I'm not feel do not comfortable, uh, do not feel very comfortable because I'm going to criticize a bit what is going on. I agree with Katerina, but the, the cultural the, the diplomacy is very important thing. Culture and diplomacy. When we were talking with Vasil before we actually opened this meeting. We mentioned that somebody, when somebody organizes some cultural events uh, abroad, whether we should regard this as a cultural diplomacy uh, activity or not. So if you're talking about some of the components, um, maybe we didn't, we lacked this understanding in order to demonstrate how further on 
a diplomacy should, whatever should be taken, but diplomacy after the culture made their initial steps, you know. So we have to think how your pyramid from the informant to the full-fledged activities, uh, what do you have to do to talk about the cultural diplomacy in order to achieve our priorities. The second um, important thing in your uh, title, um, if you're talking about the MFA, uh, I, you know, I do not agree that we have well-articulated regional interests. If we are talking about our cooperation, yes, sir. Constitution mentioned that we have a lot of strategic documents which demonstrate that we do have some movement toward that thing. When we are talking about Asian, which is also mentioned in your strategy and the current uh, uh, regional strategies like Asian materials. Uh, so far, I, I feel that maybe you'll be successful with the Asian strategy sometime in the future, but now, uh, nowadays we can talk about some draft document and we cannot talk about regions as our priority sphere of our activities. And Middle East, also I would like to mention that, but I can't see any grand strategy in that region either. So maybe I should formulate our understanding in different way what we would like to achieve through this tool of our instrument, of our cultural diplomacy. Um, Catherine also mentioned that, that we have some manifolds, let's say, or the trunk lines. Uh, if you're talking about specific topics or subjects, if you're talking geography. We have some we're in China or Asia, or Japan, I mean. Why not to say that this is not the subject of the country uh, which is located in Asia, but those are members of the G7 who can actually resolve very important issues. And we have to take that into consideration. I mean, the decisions which they take to consolidate the international relationship, etc., etc., because we are talking about some kind of reform. Um, in the, one of the ideas which was mentioned by the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, how we can uh, wrap that in the um, reform envelope. So to say that we have, we, we must mention, we cannot base ourselves on those, well, we can base ourselves on what have you mentioned, like counter action or you know, to the Russian aggression, mentioned that, or the global Ukraine ship, let's say we mentioned that, but so we, we uh, it kind of uh, deflated a bit, I mean, if you're talking about this issue. I elect the neighboring countries' uh, orientation because Central Europe, on the whole, is much bigger player, you know, if you're talking about the interests, as compared um, to the approach mentioned in your original initiative, like Poland and Hungary. Of course, there are some sensitive issues in place, but even Visegrad 4, like a realization or the uh, the the three C's uh, initiative of uh, Bucharest and uh, you know all those steps we are uh, moving towards those through our initiatives we are going to uh, to entertain now you know, when we are talking about thematic priorities which uh, have to be entertained in the um, let's say uh, in, uh, in, uh, through the prism of the interest but again. Cultural speaking, they, they agree to, to cooperate culture, culturally, but it, whether it is going to be your portfolio or, let's say, the ministry, I don't know, we have to take that in consideration as well. From formation to positive attitude, how we move, how we understand each other. One year is not enough. Annual priorities, I mean, or one year priority, I understand what ideas um, were basis for that. This is not enough for the general strategy. And this will may take not only five years, even more than five years. So we have to take into consideration other instruments, our tools, other indicators. It's very also very important to understand what toolbox we have. I can understand what you have. Maybe you would like to have, we proceed from the opportunities of the budget available. I mean, how you're going to move forward um, from this day. But again, there is no mention of what you have in your toolbox, and this kind of uh, concerns me a bit because we have to make a step toward this kind of formation in order to form um, uh, or to, um, let's say, formulate the decision as a decision. If, like a Ukrainian prism, in the end of the year, we, we ask ourselves what kind of attainments or achievements we have and what are the regions where Ukraine could be a leader 
but somewhat we forget somewhat about the Chernobyl region and the uh, Oriental Partnership, Eastern Partnership, I mean. We, we could do it more for the Mir, other countries, Bulgaria, Romania, and find our common interests. I am going to stop here, but um, that I believe that we have a lot of work to do together. You know, thank you, Gennady and Vladimir. Reflection upon reflection, they say. I know that you're against instrumentalization of culture per se. This is kind of a trend which is very uh, widely uh, used in, uh, in some of the developed countries. Maybe it has a right to live. And I understand there, there will be a lot of questions and comments um, in this specific context. Um, th thank you very much, uh, I mean, um, the previous speakers for feedback regarding our strategy. It seems to me, as far as I can remember, this is the first uh, case of public um, discussion of uh, the, uh, these documents can be kind of a roadmap of the, let's say, the landmark and the, what kind of Ukrainian cultural diplomacy is now and can become in, over the next few years. And uh, your, um, your, your recommendations are very valuable and we uh, repeat ourselves very often that this strategy is very, is a live document and we are guided by the practical, um, let's say, uh, by, by basis and uh, whatever can actually uh, guide our activities in the future. And regarding your question, Vasil, the question which actually uh, pursues us from the very first day of our existence, can we instrumentalize the culture for political purposes? I, um, I, I like a kind of the in-between uh, notion that culture is the policy should not be put over uh, anything else, I mean, uh, over each other. We have to work for the um, state interest through the, we are doing through that. Uh, we are doing that through cultural content, which is produced by Ukraine, and through the uh, through those things which appear in the Ukrainian cultural field, um, the political field. No, there is no controversy. Those are not controversial. It is something which can be done by the Ukraine Institute, but any other play players who work in the field of Ukraine diplomacy, with or without Ukraine government support, um, uh, be in the course of uh, uh, in the course of our life. It seems to me that our activity, to some extent, might systematize those efforts which have been exerted already by many people or been um, carried out by many people uh, in order to um, offer in our strategy some specific vector or uh, trend or direction to move um, uh, along uh, for not only for our institute. If I can comment on some of the scissors, uh, well, well, we you can do that, but first of all, if you do not object, we can uh, address the question to MNA. We do not have from the audience, local audience here, but I have uh, my own uh, question to MNA. You mentioned the uh, availability of the Muslim uh, population in Ukraine, and this is a kind of chance to open some other Muslim uh, Islam, Islam uh, countries in the world. 20% of the Russian population are Muslims, more than 30 million people. In our country, we are talking about slightly more than 30% of the population. How we can compete with, with, uh, with that country if we are talking about implementation, using that religious factor? Maybe we can um, uh, entertain some other issues in this context. Uh, for example, for the State Department, uh, the religion is kind of taboo, something with topic which is forbidden, you know. To talk about that, first of all, it's a Protestant country. They can use that in their policy and politics. You know, they, I know that other countries have a different attitude towards that, but your opinion, I'm seeking your opinion on that subject matter. Please turn on the mic. Do you hear me? Yes, thank you. I do not answer directly whether we are competitive with the Russian Federation. This is really difficult. First, Karina said it correctly that our resource that Ukraine has, we cannot compare it. Four billion US dollars are spent by Russia yearly for such influences and cultural diplomacy and part of these influences. 
those manipulations that distort the essence of many processes in which Russian Federation interferes. And in the context of religion, I believe that we should speak about religious freedoms. We should be proud of this. Russia is an oppressive state. And we protect cultural and uh, um, cultural rights, language rights of nations. In Russia, there are tens of um, um, indigenous peoples that are destroyed. And uh, in Crimea, they um, uh, try to get rid of uh, the main language uh, in Crimea for Crimean Tatars. And we should uh, provide another case how to protect religious freedoms and uh, uh, language rights and also how we can use this. This is the, um, the way to open the door and I believe that in the countries of the Middle East, they do not know a lot about Ukraine. They know about Crimean Tatar people. I felt this myself. We have now active occupation of Crimea. And I would like to say that reforms and investment is only part of communication. No one... Um, uh, for, for me, this uh, priority to communicate um, this uh, Russian aggression and the language we should use uh, to, um, you know, that there is um, some uh, fatigue in the world uh, concerning Ukraine, and uh, we should properly communicate to dif uh, by different ways. We should not forget about this factor of aggression. I believe that the Crimean Tatars as Muslims, as an indigenous people uh, that suffer uh, in Crimea, the statistics of repression clearly shows that there is disproportion in repressions. The majority of political prisoners are Crimean Tatars. And through the articulation and informing what is this people, its history, not something separate, but as part of Ukrainian discourse, part of Ukrainian policy. This is the way how to, through uh, protection of rights of Muslims and uh, religious belief, this is opportunity uh, to be heard. Uh, this will be a better way. Yes, I like your answer. I mean, I have one more question to you. We have five minutes with you. I have a question. On my page, I had discussion concerning cultural and public diplomacy, and uh, opinions differ. There is a question about cooperation with our diplomatic institutions abroad and different projects concerning investment, culture promotion, instruments of public diplomacy, I cooperate with embassies abroad. I have been doing it for more than 20 years, and I saw the trend that sometimes embassies help, or they may not help, but they should would like to have a logo and uh, to have some publications. And I understand that uh, they want to show that they can treat, they include this in their reports, and sometimes it works in Dubai. Um, uh, Arabs like this presence of the state. But in uh, the Western countries, the presence of the state in uh, the projects uh, is viewed negatively in cultural projects because it looks like propaganda and uh, there is lack of trust to this and no trust to Ukrainian state, for example. This is not about Ukrainian state. This is the trust to power. The level of trust to power in Germany is not really high. It is higher than in Ukraine, but still not very high. And I have a question to you. Um, and uh, you are responsible for this area, your first deputy minister. Maybe we sh should, um, whether we should have the logo, the emblem of Ukraine in all the countries concerning cultural projects. Do I understand correctly your question? Please correct me. 
if this question, you are right that sometimes we may see some competition in some cases. For example, if we have a powerful ambassador um, who has good reputation in the country, uh, he is involved in some communication, and uh, also there is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and they should form the policy, and there is a clash of uh, the ministry and uh, um, embassy. This is uh, um, the question of belonging of this communication, and uh, there should be proper balance between the ministry and embassies. And uh, the ministry should um, provide a strategy, and the operative activity should belong to embassies. If we are speaking about logo, do you speak about branding? Yes. Yeah, right. Uh, logos and publications or and some uh, billboards during events. Uh, I have clear view on this. There should be unique branding because if you're speaking about the marketing of the process, it works better than something separate. Look, from the very start, I wanted to speak about challenge of any communication, including cultural diplomacy. This is a high competitiveness of the brands and this unique brand, it always works uh, to create added value for representatives of the business, culture, and others, and for the state. So if some embassies want, want to have a separate brand, I don't believe this is correct. If we want to establish proper communication and uh, bring messages, um, uh, maybe you didn't understand me correctly. Uh, do we need state symbols? My argument is like this. If state is not seen behind these events of cultural or economic diplomacy, the better it is, uh, there is more trust, better perception. As Mr. Krukov said, um, they are not uh, interested uh, in, uh, they want to see philosophers, writers, painters, because there is more trust to such people. This is about credibility. Yes, I believe this is so. Uh, official power cannot have a monopoly over the state. Uh, the state is a complex um, thing, and I, I am really loyal to this idea. And the presence of criticism and active participation of other representatives of the state, not only the representatives of power. This is about balance of strategy. And uh, I understand that the time is up, and uh, we will speak about these issues later, and we hope for fruitful cooperation. Katerina wants to answer this question, and after this, Vladimir will speak uh, about this topic. Uh, so if this was a question for some uh, officials in the U.S. They would present their banner, their flag, um, concerning any product. Why should we be afraid to do this? If the project is successful, why, if there is a flag of Ukraine, why do you think that uh, uh, they will have less trust because of this? We should be capable. We should propose to the world some projects and the flag of Ukraine. It should be on the projects, especially if the embassies of Ukraine in any country of the world spends its time and intellectual and personal resources in order to have this project in the cooperation with the Ukrainian Institute. You should put the logo of the Ministry of the Institute of Embassy so there are many opinions on this. We would like to hear from Vladimir. And uh, you see that uh, there is no trident, no uh, state of, uh, blue and yellow uh, flag. And uh, in Sweden, they use other logos. And there is a reason for this. 
The reason is, if you do not have state logos, the trust is bigger. American embassy in Ukraine, they carry out many, many projects of cultural diplomacy, and they put their logo. And uh, the projects they finance, they want to see their logos in order that everyone understand that this was done um, for the, um, with the use of U.S. money. And if they bring some blues or jazz uh, um, performers, they do not put the logos there. So, because this would be too much. So, this is my argument. Please understand me correctly, Vladimir. I agree that not always the availability of the state symbols brings about more confidence or trust. We actually could feel that in our activities. There were some projects when we communicate with our potential partners, uh, with the assistance of our uh, embassies. So the message is either they do not want to, um, uh, to deal with some governmental institutions or they sometimes expect that um, the governmental body or institution will actually tran transmit some specific message and do not promote, let's say, um, they try to use the, those messages for the artistic practice or some cultural message, etc., etc. And I, I agree that uh, this happens and we try to depart from the state symbols in our activity, like some uh, similar institutions which operate in a similar way in other countries as well. Because our task uh, to create such a uh, public, um, let's say, uh, benefit for the state and not to put our logo. Um, and our activity actually is very beneficial to taxpayers. What we have to do sometimes, you know, to, to create our subjectivity of those institutions. This is very important for new institutions, which we actually are. And those who would like to use our institute and we want somebody to deal with us, we have some good repute, re good reputation, which is worth of this confidence or trust. And um, based on those um, arguments, we would like to, to underline um, our identity by creating uh, the, the good record, which will help us to open some of the doors which are still closed on us or for us. I would like to react to, to some of the comments of our uh, my speak, colleague speakers. This is kind of a through topic. Uh, I'm, to I'm talking about the specifics and maybe more clear uh, formulations, what the Ukrainians would like to achieve, what the cultural diplomacy would like to achieve in this or another country. And I must confess that uh, we lacked such kind of landmark or the roadmap when we were working on this strategy on the part of the political priorities of MFA as such. Our next step, our publication of our strategy, we believe to be the, uh, the, the use or involvement of the, the cooperation with many other players, let's say the MFA and the, the, the diplom diplomats, etc. Maybe we can come in some country papers which will give us a clear answer in which context we operate and what are the peculiarities or specific issues of this or another country, how active are Ukrainians in this or another country, what political tasks can be resolved by cultural diplomacy in those respective countries and what kind of cultural uh, um, task, or, or, uh, let's say, the general um, uh, humanitarian issues we can resolve. What task we set uh, before ourselves in the X country, for example. And it's very good that the speakers mentioned that today because we, we really need such a kind of the landmarks or the roadmap, and as I mentioned before, we're going to work on that to create that um, in the future. If you're talking about the, whether our regional strategy is correct or not, it seems to us that um, this focus on the, those issues is very productive to us. If we just can break down the strategy into 15 or 20 countries, it will be the question why we did not crystallize or let's say 
in the mentioned above regions, or let's say in other areas like Black Sea region, or the uh, let's say Eastern Partnership, or whether Euro Atlantic. Um, direction or should break down Europe into big quantity individual markets, which actually this uh, content is. There are a lot of different approaches. On the one hand, they contradict each other, but on the other hand, they are required pieces of the whole puzzle. So we uh, focused on the approach and uh, was mentioned by uh, uh, Katerina in the proactive um, direction where culture is an important component, but one of the seven. And I would like to contradict to you says that we are culture-centric. No, of course, art is a cultural content. Um, by default, we have to deal with that, but this is also, we are talking about the education sphere, the civil society aspect, academic community, and we are going to work on the cross-sectoral um, approach Ukrainian language as the uh, object, as the topic, as the asset of Ukraine, which is very uh, important uh, component of our the identity. And those directions uh, we try to diversify, uh, departing <coughs> uh, from the uh, culture centric <coughs> approach. And I believe this is the strength of the document we are discussing today. Do we have some more time? Well, I understand that Sergei Korsunsky would like to say a few words about uh, the topic we mentioned, um, a fake operation within cultural projects. We can stop at that and uh, we can give the floor You can uh, to Sergei. I would like to recognize his right to the question, and I remember about um, uh, Sergei, but they reminded me about that. So uh, just a few words to crown my idea. Uh, there was a thesis about 30th, 30th anniversary of independence of Ukraine, a big opportunity for this country in its strategic communications, not only in cultural diplomacy. And there are quite a few topics like that, even for the next year, which are really very productive, both for the positive agenda of Ukraine communication and using not really very positive pages of the history of our country, we have to talk about those more productively uh, to bring those to the positive experience, to the positive agenda, how Ukraine can actually cope with, that, uh, with those challenges of the past. I'm talking about the 35th anniversary of the Chernobyl accident uh, next year. And for example, whether in the context of Ukraine's presence in Japan or some other platforms, international platforms in other countries, we can product we'll be productively revealing that topic. Again, the Babi Yar tragedy, which we are going to mark next year as well, anniversary, I mean. And those are the issues um, using which Ukraine can talk about it, its experience uh, what can be done, um, whatever is associated with that tragedy, and uh, bring it into the uh, real and positive um, strategy. And again, 150th anniversary since the birth date of Lysa Ukrainka, next year again. So those are um, through focuses which we can talk about each year. Ukraine can find something in its history to program its cultural diplomacy. And very short, very briefly, uh, what uh, Andriy Kurko mentioned, um, to which extent culture can be an efficient tool for the explanation of uh, what Ukraine is, uh, what gladifies our hearts, what are our aspirations, our hopes, etc. When Andriy talk was talking about literature, then can be, let's say, expanded or extended to different artistic spheres uh, because even the theater, literature, visual art, etc. Um, uh, everything can uh, tell about us like none of the strategic communications or any official campaigns can uh, talk about. The, here we uh, we visualize the strengths of the cultural diplomacy, how we can use the life stories of the people of the country. Thank you.
And uh, before I actually uh, give the floor to Sergei, there is another question which was addressed to me. Name it since you're a representative of MFA, I address it to you. We were talking about priority of the regions and regions generally speaking. There is a question of Ms. Shklar, uh, what we can expect, uh, what, what project in the sphere of cultural uh, diplomacy which will help in the headquarters of international organizations. Uh, what uh, strikes my mind, first of all, New York, Brussels, Geneva, Vien, uh, Vienna, uh, where we, they have the largest headquarters of UN and other international organizations. What do you think about that? Then I start to, from the end of your question. Uh, when we are talking about international organizations as a rule, these, those are not the best platforms for cultural projects, and very often they are um, theme-based or topic-oriented. If you're talking about international day about combating the inhuman practice, and you can some product which can be demonstrated, they do something like that. But always they have kind of uh, underpinning, political underpinning. But speaking in principle, we we should not say uh, completely say no to those, but I would like to mentioned what you uh, said. Um, we are talking about uh, cultural diplomacy. This is the direction where the PPP must become the basis for uh, cooperation. It seems to me that, um, you, you know, you, the Ukrainian Institute can say what they are uh, doing. Uh, it's not the Minister of Culture. There are a lot of uh, associations. None of the efforts is futile. Uh, of course, we use not much uh, comparatively what we can do actually we're talking about our cultural products but given you a, a specific example that happened before this war when uh, Yunkoch was um, in power I'm talking when the Crimean Tatars wanted to demonstrate a, a movie in a, in Ankara in and Jamilo wanted to to be there and uh, if you know if you remember Jamilov didn't have very good relations with Yunkovich. Actually, half government of, the, of, the, of Turkey was present at the demonstration during this session of this movies demonstrated. So my question is whether the Ukrainian ambassador would uh, join them. Yes, he was. He even said a few words. Uh, though, uh, though, 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 uh, though they said that he was going after, if he appears there, he would have to go back home after that. But I could not um, make it there. What I'm, bottom line is, we, we diplomats must be present there. I heard that during the war already when I um, uh, was speaking at the university and I met with the uh, public at large and I was telling the story what was happening. And uh, they told me that you, Mr. Ambassador, use the same propaganda as the Russian ambassador does. I would like to say that we have to independently invite analysts, experts. In this case, even when we are talking about culture, it should go hand in hand in parallel to what I mentioned. But I do hope that the Ukrainian Institute will do that before um, going to this or another country, before starting or launching a, a large project and start the preparation for that, uh, we have to take advice from the local embassy. Um, a few days ago, um, it, I, I, uh, they, 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 actually there was information, there were, there were uh, two boys in Japan who uh, have a fluent, are fluent in Japanese um, language, they have their own channels, and they actually appear in the Ukrainian t-shirt with the inscription um, uh, the national uh, team of Ukraine football team, and, and uh, you know the, uh, the local citizens they take a lot of fun and they actually read that because they know those are not Japanese citizens, but they really have a lot of subscribers. A lot of people watch their uh, transmissions, and of course, when we are talking about those, talk about the project, so I will take this opportunity by all means to use the product which we have still to create. This is not a, an expensive project. Those are the kind of uh, really not ch cheap one as compared to some big show, etc. But you can involve or attract a big, large 
straight of uh, the uh, Japanese youth in the embassy actually exists. One of the tasks of the embassies is to give advices. And Dream mentioned uh, that books. I didn't know anything about that book. But if and uh, there is mention of Fukushima, you know, and uh, and uh, he was trying to work within the within the boundaries of the Chernobyl topic. We can talk about that. We can take each other's advice, and I don't see any problem if it's clearly understood that uh, that the activities of the embassy is going to be taken as a propaganda uh, tool. Well, you're welcome to think about that. The most important is the essence of what we are doing. It's very difficult to measure the, the, the you, know, you know the difference between that. It's very difficult to say whether that program uh, last year was efficient or not. But uh, it actually had some. Uh, it echoed within the hearts and minds of some of the people. So it's very important to take advice of each other and then to co introduce corrections into your steps, and then you have to. Uh, to try to achieve the maximum possible results and not to be concerned uh, about what is doing no, that or not, Ambassador. Thank you very much, um, uh, Sergei, for very good examples for your energy shared with us. Those are very important things. I believe that uh, there is an energy emanated by our uh, Ambassador in Japan because, uh, Japan because uh, very often there were cases when, you know, there were just a few cases similar to that in the past. So I would like to give you one example. Fifteen years ago, I had a client, a Ukrainian businessman, who dreamt of uh, make acquaintance with Wiccan U in Singapore when he was still at power. He went to Singapore. He, tr he tried to understand how he can actually uh, make an appointment with Wiccan U. And uh, he said that he liked very much classical music. And he sponsored actually the concert of um, Ukrainian uh, classic music ensemble in uh, Esplanade. Like La Scala, but in Singapore sort. A lot of Singapore citizens, Singapore elite, um, visited that and they were at raptures. They didn't know that in Ukraine they have such a nice classical um, music. That was a very expensive. I um, would say event, uh, but uh, he, he was a rich um, uh, person, and he sponsored that, and he met with Zilkun Yu, and then he actually uh, he, he he spent some money to publish some of the works of Zilkun Yu in Ukraine. So that was in the long uh, in the long run. In the end of the day, that was a kind of promotion uh, of Ukraine or making um, more Ukraine closer to the local citizens. So you're yeah, speaking about uh, Andrei Kurkov, you know, my question is about the role of the state in different processes. As you know, Europe constantly tries to catch up with the uh, United States in their competitiveness in the sphere of innovations and technology. Uh, even uh, say Europe, I'm talking about EU. They try to simulate innovations, technologies to, to come up with subsidies, etc., support, but they cannot catch up the United States because the United States companies are the, one of the largest in the world. They cannot possibly do that, you know. So when we're talking about the United States, there is no role of the state. We are talking about the role of business, etc. So it deals with the culture. For example, uh, for the example given by Andrei um, Kurkov about an Albanian writer who spent 20 years of his life in France and who described the Albanian culture, maybe that was the best possible thing what Albanians could do to give the picture of Albania. Like um, uh, you who immigrated, um, you know, the Czech writer, he, he managed to describe who are Czechs and what is Czech Republic, generally speaking. And I don't know where is this kind of um, the borderline between the two. I know that there are some guys you mentioned that who fluently speak um, Japanese. You know, the creativity is something, well, this is creativity. It does not tolerate some external impact that cannot be created artificial. And we, what do you think about that? First of all, I agree that, that the state by itself cannot create or select the musician or a musician or writer who can become popular abroad. 
the state can work with the material which has been uh, self-made, so to say. We have to understand that the same, uh, the European approach is the same. The French um, people, uh, okay, the people through the Skavrada program, through the embassy of France in Ukraine, uh, those French art figures who made themselves. And now France actually pushes them and uses that uh, the best example of the French culture. In doing that, uh, they actually try to expand their cultural influence and through this cultural influence to expand their political uh, impact or influence. In this sense, we should not invent the bicycle <clears throat> or a wheel. Uh, Ukrainian creative workers go where they are invited. Uh, by this or another country, but the state, uh, actually the government can find some platforms and propose to those platforms that the state of Ukraine will support or help those platforms to hold the discussions or the meetings with Ukrainian artists or art figures. For example, there is a well-known Royal Festival Zone in London on the Thames River. This is a concert hall with a lot of uh, several small um, uh, rooms or halls and big, big hall. And they present their culture, their philosophy all the time. So they actually approach the lead, uh, lead the managers and they, uh, they, for example, they plant the mix or the 10 days of Polish culture. They allocate the budgetary money for the representative of Polish culture to go there, and those who are interested in them, they come to London. Actually, this is free of charge for the visitors, and they can listen to Polish poetry, Polish uh, history, etc., etc. I uh, was there more than once. Many countries uh, actually were represented there. Ukraine? Never. So they can invite... Uh, uh, Ukrainians, but they have to, they propose themselves as as a potential um, art figures who can go there and uh, show themselves, so to say, that Ukraine can propose to different festivals to invite Ukraine as the honorary guest or the special guest in the realm of, of um, cinema, literature, or and nothing else. Actually, managed once to persuade one of the most popular festival in Cognac city of France, this festival of literature of European Union, to make Ukraine and why Ukraine as the honorary guest. And that was the first time after Spain, when Ukraine was invited in the capacity of the honorary guest in the, that festival. What they did in, the, in those days, they selected six writers, six books. Uh, written by Ukrainians, they already had been published by that time, and they s they sent those books to all the libraries of that regions, and they asked the readers to vote for the best book in their mind, and to decide which is the best book. So, forty eight thousand readers actually got acquainted with Ukrainian culture uh, or Ukrainian books translated into French. In that small region. The same can be done by any or in any European country, given the support on the uh, government, on the part of the government or the local embassy, just to prove that we have something to sell in the cultural sense. On that, I would like to thank Andre for this message, which we actually share with you completely. Uh, this has something to do not so much with the strategy, but rather with tactics of our. Uh, you mentioned that festival, festival hall. This is part of the South Bank uh, Center, immediate to the south of Big Ben and the Parliament. If it were not for the COVID-19 pandemic, we would have the, for the first time, for the first time ever, an opportunity to represent Ukraine culture. It's kind of co-production, cool theatralized or staged. A show, uh, British Ukrainian. Uh, we plan to demonstrate that on the central London platform or stage, uh, dealing with the exclusive art 
and the novel forms of self-expression which are practiced in different um, countries of Europe and the United States. And this kind of pitch of uh, Ukraine as a focus country abroad, this is a super wonderful idea. And if you're talking about our efforts, last year such focus country owing to our project Ukraine was presented at the Viennale, uh, the biggest Austrian festival uh, in the Austrian showcase uh, was Vienna. Ukraine is, is going to be one of the two focus countries which we are going to, premiere, to present uh, six musical teams. This year in New York we had a festival of Ukrainian um, uh, music with our support, three-day festival and, and uh, uh, they close unknown, um, uh, known un unknown strangers, I would say, okay, uh, in Poland and they agreed to take Ukraine as its uh, closest neighbor in country, and they agreed to to dedicate this year's festival completely to this topic. Now this is superb, you know. Um, and since we are talking about the regions and the priorities and the foreign policy, I have a question uh, which would uh, which is uh, close to the audience who watch us now. When I went to the United States, which is called uh, Global Village in the United States, for one year. Uh, I, 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 really, I decided I'm going to be uh, uh, still from Brazil. Everybody was took interest in that. The Brazil is a huge country, you know, a very powerful country. Oh, you know, you know, a member of the G20. Um, in, uh, in Africa, there is, you have the South African Republic, um, or Nigeria, with 160 million strong people, which is a very promising country for us, you know. Maybe we can explain something there. Maybe it's planned for later. Maybe something can happen there. Maybe in different uh, scale, you know. But uh, like as compared to some priority regions. But anyway, I believe this is something to do with the Catherine thesis about ambitions. Maybe two big ambitions, uh, given the resources available to us today. I believe that those numerous questions, uh, wishes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, how are you going to work in this or another region? This country is also very important, but it's not included in your geographical plan, so to say. How are you going to articulate your priorities, whether there is more cultures and uh, diplomacy or vice versa? So uh, what's the experience of the Ukrainian Institute? And my question is to uh, Catherine. And um, Ukrainian Institute is a profile institute in the sphere of cultural diplomacy. They try to uh, to, 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 to embrace what cannot be embraced, actually, so to say. Uh, I repeat myself, we, we am not talking about the uh, Ukrainian Institute per se, but the cultural development in general speaking. Answering your question, I can say that to, we cannot embrace unembraceable today. We have to understand that. We, we, we have to, um, to understand the expectations, uh, what they expect of us. Uh, there are different talks, um, and uh, they have to make our answers to those questions more specific, because during such discussions, or result of the discussions, can find the answers. Since we almost exhausted our time um, bracket, so uh, a few minutes for to each one, we start with uh, Katerina and Gennady, and Vladimir, you're going to finish. And the, oh, my, and the Sergei, of course, and Sergei, of course. And then we are going to close our discussion, Catherine. Katerina, you have the floor. Well, actually, I would like once again to call upon the Ukrainian Institute to clearly uh, prioritize their goals and objectives for next year. You mentioned that there are, there is anniversary of Babi Yar and Chernobyl and 150th anniversary of the birth of Lisa Green. Okay, those are very important things. But given the budget which you have, you won't be able to take care of all those. But it seems to me 30th anniversary of independence, this could become the more most positive message to all. A very short advice. Maybe you can uh, find a slot in your very busy agenda one day when you can communicate only with the ambassadors who work in different countries. 
you have to generate a list of different countries and communicate with each of the ambassadors in those countries. I believe that during those Skype communication, you'll, you'll crystallize a lot of different issues, um, arguments, communications, and you can actually find a bridge between the culture, the diplomacy, uh, between the um, MFA and our ambassadors who are actually soldiers in the fields. In the field, Gennady, thank you. If I were ambassador in Brazil, it would be superb, you know, but there are two different things. First of all, this issue is not to the Ukrainian uh, Institute, but to MFA, which mentioned that uh, region is one of the priority. Maybe in this case, it would be easier for the Institute to work um, later when we have something in place already. On the other hand, it would be, it is important to have the proactivity of those people who work in along those lines. A lot depends on the, this or not the ambassador, to which extent he understands those problems or those issues. The, the expert Lamati um, issue and the different experts can go to this or another country. More active ambassadors make use of that or use that. Less active, they forget about that, so to say. And V, please switch on your mic. Well, uh, speaking about the devices, uh, you know, I would like when the Ukrainian culture is represented abroad to support the image of Ukraine, we should not forget about national majorities or ethnic minorities. Ukrainian uh, Hungarians, Ukrainian Tatars, and it comes to my mind that recently I, I visited the UN uh, premises in New York and uh, we could we could hang on the wall some pictures or canvases of the Crimean Tatar um, artists uh, you know, under the brand of Ukraine. This could be a very good message. Uh, there is something we can do, you know, a lot that we can do. And the last thing, uh, word of mine. So look how uh, Alexander Sherburn has worked and still works in Austria, how much he did for the Austrians to uh, fall in love with Ukrainian culture and uh, so that they could feel almost our close relatives, our kin. I believe that the experience of such diplomats of Alexander Sherbert should be disseminated. He's not the only one. He's one of a few, but we have the diplomats, I mean to say, who know how to promote the cultural image of Ukraine. Sergei? Sergei? I think it was Mosul, I would like to use your example about Sing Singapore. This is a brilliant example. And I would like to use this example. Maybe this is a good opportunity for the Green Institute to pay attention to the fact that a very interesting idea is involvement of sponsors, the um, concerned parties, so to say. There are some of those, and there are the interests not only to meet with some persons, you know, but generally speaking, such projects for many people who, uh, who have financial resources, <coughs> for self-assertion, let's say. Um, and we have to make use of that. We did that in Turkey, in this really uh, very, very serious assistance. Not only PPP is important, but also the uh, public oligarch partnership. We, we can use that partnership. Let them work for the country, you know. Vladimir, your closing remarks. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, very briefly. Uh, this week, not only one day has been um, allocated for the communication with the embassies, but two. We already communicated today with the Qatar and the and Hungary. We had the meeting with the ambassadors who are going to go to France in September this year. This morning, we talked to our colleague uh, in Japan and continuing our talk with Sir Sergei. We are talking about the year 2021. And uh, we are working on that. We hope that we are going to be even more active in our dealing with you know, communication with diplomats. Another um, uh, thesis of yours also, you know, I like very much. This is going to be to West Street. So our proposals must uh, overlap um, uh, the confidence and uh, oh, the MFA, I mean, and the 
and and we aptly mentioned that um, about the representation of ethnic minorities and multifacetedness of Ukrainian culture abroad, and we have to do that why our Crimean program, which is going to have a kind of through approach, uh, we are going to use this added value to our work through the voices of Ukrainian uh, of the Crimean Tatars and uh, our Ukrainian community, generally speaking. I would like to say that um, again, uh, this uh, this is what uh, if we are talking about the Ukrainian suit, our foreign establishments as well understood by the MFA and MNA is a, a very big advocate and uh, Mr. Kuleba as well uh, in order to strengthen uh, and broaden these those efforts in the future which I would like to have and thank you for uh, your remarks I would like to to thank again to all the speakers Sergei Andri, Katerina, Vladimir Gennadyans and you made it more or less funny which is wonderful and it's very good that we Discuss the cultural diplomacy in the context of the regional, um, uh, regional priorities.